Hello everyone, and welcome to the first weapon showcase that I will be doing for Bloodborne. The first of many, guys, the first of many, and I am quite excited to get started with this series of videos again, believe me, I am. This weapon right here, guys, is the Ligarius Wheel. Now, this is a weapon that you can get from following Alfred's little storyline, sending him to Kanehurst Castle, and going through all of that fun stuff. Now, if you are a member of the Kanehurst Vilebloods and you don't want him to kill your queen, don't worry. You can you can make her come back to life. No worries. It's all good. The Vilebloods always win. Anyway, the Ligarius Wheel. This weapon requires 20 strength, 12 skill, and 10 arcane in order to wield. It has an S scaling in strength, no skill scaling, and a C scaling in arcane. And its physical base damage is 200, and arcane base is 50. Simple enough stuff. Now, with this weapon, I, at the moment, do have a few blood gems put into it, of course, why would I not? And the blood gems that I have put into it are all increasing my physical damage. I didn't bother increasing the arcane simply due to the fact that this is a quality build, not an arcane build. And second, that C scaling arcane, it, it's really not all that worthwhile to start putting things into arcane to use this weapon. It's really just not that great, in my opinion, to do that. However, you can do whatever you want, that's your call. For the sake of this video, I will be covering it as though it were, uh, well, mostly a purely physical weapon, because I'm barely getting any damage from the arcane, and as such, it is what it is. Anyway, now, this weapon actually has some of the best hyper armor on attacks that I've seen in this game so far. It's very impressive how reliably you can actually stand there and trade hits with people because of the hyper armor on this weapon's attacks. Now, that all being said, there are a few issues with it. Mainly the fact that the hyper armor isn't active as soon as you start the attack, it's active once you uh, are partway through it. So, starting up your attacks, that's the slightly difficult part with this weapon. It's got a slow startup. Now, that being said, you can use its faster attacks like its run-in and R1, its rolling and dashing R1, and its running and dashing R1. Those are relatively fast attacks, and you can catch people off guard with them. Now, that being said, if you keep doing only those, your attack will get disrupted by someone at some point, and you will have a visceral, atta visceral attack done to you, and that'll be less than pleasant. So you need to mix up your attacks. It's a good thing that this weapon has a pretty decent variety of attacks that you can do. It's a very, very fun weapon, and the hitboxes are actually surprisingly wide. I mean, I know that makes sense, it's a giant wheel, so the hitboxes should be wide, but they're wider than it actually appears to be. Like, they're wider, the hitboxes are wider than the weapon appears to be, is what I'm getting at. And as such, you can clip people with this weapon quite easily, and that's a good thing. Now, a few of you have noticed, when you go to your secondary form of this weapon, it becomes two wheels, because, of course, two wheels are better than one. And... It gets all red and glowy, and that's awesome. However, going to that form does not give it much of anything. What you need to do well in this form is actually use your L2. That will buff it, and you can do this up to four times, I believe is what the number is, and it will start to drain your health. Now, that's fine because it gives you a pretty decent damage buff, and I do believe that that damage buff does scale with arcane. The more arcane you have, the better the damage buff will be per uh, L2 that you do. Although I cannot confirm that, that's just what I've been told. So if anyone does know that for sure, please do leave it in the comments so everyone can see it. The more info we have, the better. But from what I've been told, that does scale with your arcane. The more arcane you have, the better the buff will be each time you press L2. So, there's that. Now, with this weapon, one of my favorite things to do with it that I actually did not do in this video is to uh, use lead elixirs. Lead elixirs with this weapon can lead to some silly things happening, and it's kind of, it's kind of stupid in all honesty, how well you can just throw on a lead elixir and then R1 spam away at someone. It's really, honestly, very silly. So, there's that. Other things about the weapon that are worth mentioning 
If you do the L2, it will drain your health and will continue to drain your health until you uh, go back to your other form. So be careful of that. Also, when you're doing your transformation attacks, when you're in the secondary form and you're doing the transformation attack back to the first, you smack the wheel over your head. And the red that sort of gushes off the side, for lack of a better term, that's actually what deals damage. It won't deal a significant amount of damage, but it can stun someone long enough to put them into a decent position for you to set up an attack to hit them again. So, it's something to keep in mind. As far as the weapon's combo ability is concerned, it's R1 spam. You can get someone once or twice with it usually, but I would really not recommend relying on that. It's far better with this weapon to uh, mix up your attacks. Throw in jumping attacks a lot because your jumping attacks have surprisingly wide hitboxes. Like, that's a fantastic attack to do. Also, you cannot be disrupted on your jumping attacks, so it's very, very nice. Chances are you'll just hyper armor through anything that you're jumping into, provided you've got good distancing and timing, and you'll just smack them for pretty significant damage most of the time as well. Now, one thing I also did forget to mention, my attack rating with this weapon, because I do have the blood gems in it, is around 580, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, really? Other than that, it's just a great weapon to use. I mean, it's not the best that there is in the game by any stretch of the imagination. It's not the most overpowered thing in the world. It's not the Holy Blade, but... It's a very viable weapon. It's very, very satisfying to crush your opponents with a giant wheel. And, I mean, how can you go wrong with that? Let's be honest now. So, that's pretty much all I've got to say about the weapon. Sorry if I seemed a little bit unorganized with my commentary this time around. I'll uh, get back into the swing of things with the next one, I promise. Anyway, if you guys do want to see this weapon used a bit more, Fighting Cowboy actually put up a video the other day of him using this weapon, so I'll have a link to that down in, this, down in the description for you guys to go check out. And I will see you guys all in the next video.